freshmen and new student orientation. Uh, Coleman High School as we begin a new school year. Uh, I would like to start out uh, with a quick comment. Uh, the chair that you see on the screen uh, was used at the Constitution Convention, uh, Convention in uh, Philadelphia. Ben Franklin noticed that the president's chair had a half sun. And he noted that during the writing of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, he often wondered if it was going to be a rising sun or a setting sun. And uh, he noted as they were signing the Declaration of Independence that he was confident that it would be a rising sun and not a setting sun. How many of you have graduated a student from Coleman High School? If you'll just raise your hand if you had a student graduate from high school. Thank you. How many of you have never had a student graduate from Coleman High School? This will be your first child. All right, I've had three. I've had three. And let me tell you, there's lots of big days in their life. But the day your student starts ninth grade at high school, it becomes... And those of you that have had children graduate, I think will amen this. A declaration of independence. Is that correct? You know, when they get to high school, they start declaring their freedoms. And they start looking to the future. And I want you to know that the administration and the staff here at Coleman High School, our great concern is that in 2016 when these ninth graders graduate, and uh, they walk across the stage at Wallace State Community College and we shake their hand. Uh, we hope that they will say that their life and their career begin to rise with their ninth grade year at Coleman High School. And what you will find at the high school level is there are no mulligans. There are no do-overs. You mess up on one test and it hurts your GPA and it affects your chance for scholarships. Last year, Coleman High School students were offered six and a half million dollars in scholarships. And so uh, the thing that I would ask you to do as your child moves toward independence is this weekend, not the next week or the next week, but this weekend, you need to have a serious conversation with your child if you have not already done that and say, this is for real. This counts. What you do in the next four years can have a great effect on your career, your life, and your opportunities. And I'm gonna tell you, we've had, we've had students leave here with more money and scholarships. Listen carefully now. With more money and scholarships than they could possibly spend. Trips to Europe, academic, athletic. And we've had students that have been dismissed from the school system. Possession of controlled substances. And you can't walk with them. But you can have a serious conversation. Uh, we're moving from a time, I was in elementary school for a while, and elementary school things were pretty gracious. But as you approach the age of accountability, there is accountability. And our students need to know that they're accountable for what they say and what they do. And they are no longer children. And they are becoming young adults. And so this is a serious time. And so I encourage you to have a serious conversation. Uh, not meaning to be rude, but I have found this to be true. Students will never get over a good start or a bad one. Uh, they need to understand why they're getting up every day and coming to school for the next 180 days. And if you have not looked at our course of study and our guided program of study and talked about their careers and their futures and where they're headed, uh, you need to do that. Because it's pretty tough to get up every morning and not understand why you're sitting in class seven hours a day. It needs to be headed somewhere. And so there needs to be conversations. 
about the career choices that your class selection is making for you. There's some careers that you can't get into without the right background. And so you have, if you've not seen this, it's online. We call it GPS for obvious reasons. But we have a guided program of study, and we encourage you, it's all right to change your mind, but we encourage you starting Monday when your child sits in class, when your student sits in class, that they have some idea of, this is what I would like to be when I grow up. Our school's gonna be tough. And so anything that we can do to help you with that, we would like to. Also, we know that students that are active in the high school setting are more likely to enjoy school and if you enjoy something, you work harder, you persevere longer. At Coleman High School, 75% of our students, 660 of our students participate in extracurricular activities. 75%. We have more students on this campus after the school day involved in activities than most of the schools in this system have during the school day. 660 students participating in extracurricular activities. We have an information fair in the new gym, and I encourage you to try to find something that is of interest. And that's one of the beauties of Colton City Schools. We've got a lot. Athletically, academically, and in the fine arts. There is something that your child can plug into. So please encourage them to stay after the school day, to be involved in something. And it will help their performance for the next four years. Uh, another thing that we're doing with the ninth grade is we're starting a personal finance class where students will complete the Dave Ramsey course. And uh, we're also adding to that, we're not sure about the method yet, but the Stephen Covey Seven Habits of Effective Teams uh, to address social, emotional, and just setting goals and, and being productive. And so those are some things that you'll be seeing this ninth grade year. Okay, that's enough preaching. I'm going to move on some. Uh, but the things that I do want you to know that we're going to be talking about tonight Number one, I want to encourage you to have a serious conversation for a serious start to make this four years count. Also, we're going to identify important school contact information, provide a list of critical school tasks that you need to complete to get your student off to a good start, and then we'll distribute their schedules and allow you to make a contact with their teachers. As you talk to the teachers then, you'll, you'll get contact information from them so that you and our teachers are on the same page. And that's vitally important to uh, isolate problems before they get started. And as a free bonus, I'm going to update you on the new school construction. That's something that you're going to get as much information here as school board and, and our teachers have. We'll get you up to date on that. First of all, I'm going to start out with telling you a little bit, showing you some things on the new school construction. This is kind of a rendering of what the school is going to look like. Have y'all seen this before? This is currently grass. This is where the administration offices are, and this is the media center. They're going to put in a new two-story building. This corner will be the media center. That will be the lecture hall. Uh, we're, we will demolish 44,000 square feet of classroom space and replace it with 66,000 in this area. Two-story building, 66,000 area of square feet. Construction is set, demolition set to begin in January of 2013. That's the projection right now with a 12 month construction. This class will get to spend a couple of years in the new construction area and uh, with the new construction. So we're excited about that. That is a view of what the front of the school might look like. Uh, the front of the school uh, will be facing the west. This will be the back of the school. Uh, that is the quad. That is the front of the auditorium. So uh, the doors that you came in will be renovated something of this nature, and that's the, and that's the quad area of, of, of the grass, and take that and turn it into more of a, a courtyard. Uh, pretty cool stuff, I think. One thing I think you're really going to like is that in the new construction on the lower level, on the side that uh, faces Eagle Road, if I can find my dot, this section right here will be constructed to F four tornado standards. And it's designed to withstand 180 mile an hour winds. And so we will have a true shelter area uh, for when students are on campus 
uh, during the school way, uh, day if we have intimate wedding. And so that's been a huge concern. Is that expensive? It is. But the decision was made that it was important to have a ultra safe area to shelter our students. And so that's a part of the construction that we will have. Y'all like that? That's pretty good stuff. Baby. All right. And you can tell your neighbors they've not heard some of that, so that'll, that'll be good. Uh, as far as contact information, one of the things I need you to uh, uh, write down, make sure it's on your it's on your information you need to know sheet. Uh, we have a new web page that's coming up this weekend, and colemancats.net forward slash pages forward slash Coleman High School. That will be one stop shopping for information about Coleman High School. Athletic clubs, schedules, the things that you need to know about Coleman High School, how to contact the faculty, homework assignments, everything will be linked through that web page. So you won't have to try to remember something, just go to that web page and anything that you would need relative to your students' activities at Coleman High School should be linked there. And if it's not, let us know. And uh, that's being rolled out this week. And uh, I believe that it's set up, we still haven't had the training on it, but my understanding is if you will enter your cell phone number uh, or your uh, email, that you will get automatic notifications. And so you'll be able to link up there, and uh, it will increase the connectivity significantly uh, as we go through the school year. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to the administrative contacts that you'll be working with. If they'll stand up, please. Tim Loveless is in charge of supervision. He works in school operations and student supervision, so if you need something relative to that, see Tim. Kim Hall works with academics, and uh, they do a tremendous job here at Coleman High School. And uh, if there's anything that they can do to help you, they will be excited about doing that for you. And they're located in the administrative offices. If y'all will give them a round of applause, I appreciate it. We've been working hard. Well. In guidance and counseling, on the left-hand side of your picture is Jill Bishop Hollis. She's our lead. She's the team leader for the guidance department and works with the seniors. Stacy Wren works with class of 2013-2015. Brandy Palmer will be the guidance counselor for the class of 2016 and she will be their guidance counselor all four years. And so that's who you would talk there. And our registrar is uh, Cynthia Parker. So you can put a face there. In our office, Carol Kilpatrick. On the left-hand side standing is the receptionist. Uh, on the right-hand side, the financial records, Melissa Thompson. And then our school nurse is Rachel Joyner. And if there's anything they can do to help you, those are the folks to contact in those areas. Now, if you'll find your sheet that says acknowledgement of school information. Everyone pick that up. If you'll find that, I, I apologize for the small font. I want to take a second. There's some important information in here that if your child's going to get off to a good start, they're going to receive this in homeroom on Monday. And we ask them to sign it and the parent to sign it. If you want to sign this one and have them turn it in Monday, that is fine. But this is our record that we've notified you of school policies. That you're aware that if this happens, these are the sanctions. And so you need to read through that carefully. Now, you're going to receive 10 different things in homeroom on Monday, your student is. So you need to have this list and say, let me see, and they should have that for you. Communications, that Declaration of Independence I was telling you about, it's on, you'll have to ask. They're not going to walk in and say, listen, I got the 10 things that were on that list. Here, I want you to look at it. You're going to have to ask to look at it. Uh, our Coleman City School System calendar, we gave you one of those today. The school system calendar. The Coleman High School Daily Bell Schedule was also distributed today at the table. There's copies, if you do not have one, of the Bell Schedule. The Coleman High School Family Handbook they will receive on Monday. Conduct and intervention on Monday. Medication form is the green letter. Any student taking medicine at school must receive that from a nurse, and we must have that form completed in order for them to get that. Sportsmanship pledge they will receive on Monday. Emergency dismissal form, if we have to release early, what do you want your student to do? So you'll complete that emergency release form so that their supervising teachers will know what they should do. Do they get in the car and leave with someone? Do they stay set? Or can they ride with someone or do they call someone? 
and that emergency dismissal form gives us that information. There's also a free and reduced lunch application and insurance information. Now, I do not want to insult your intelligence, but I'm going to read some things to you because these are a problem, and I need you to, to kind of clue in on these. Daily on-time attendance is mandated by state law. We need you to schedule family trips and medical appointments around the school schedule if possible. And we gave you a copy of the system schedule. Exceptions must be approved in advance. Until your student is 17 years of age, it is a state law that they attend these 180 days. Now, supervision, especially for ninth graders where you're having to drive or someone else is bringing you. We begin supervision 15 minutes before the first bell on your schedule, and it's noted on the daily bell schedule, and we provide supervision for 15 minutes afterwards. If your student is on campus earlier or later than that, we do not provide supervision unless they have been invited to participate in a school-sponsored activity. And we have posted at all of our entrances, closed campus unless there is a school event. And if there is a school event, it's on our school calendar, and they will be supervised at school-sponsored events. Uh, parents, after they're absent, must provide us with a note within two days. Here's what's excused. You get four parent notes a semester. More than that are unexcused unless you provide a medical note. Four parent notes a semester, two semesters in the year, you have eight a year that we will just take your note. More than that, by state law, we have to have a medical note. If there's a chronic, if there's a chronic illness, we will accept that. If a doctor says uh, such and such student has a chronic illness and they're not going to come see me every time they're sick, we will accept that. Uh, we have to file a report at five unexcused absences for the year. Uh, a tardy pass must come from the administrative office. If they're late for a class or school, they must get a tardy pass and we will send a letter home. You will know if they're late. Teachers must not be taken away from supervision if you need to meet with a teacher, and we want you to, and we encourage you to. You need to schedule an appointment. They're seeing about 120 students in the class. And if they're talking to you, they're not watching someone else's child. Did y'all catch that? If we take them away from supervising someone else's child, they're not doing their job. So if you need a conference, they will be glad to schedule that, but it has to be during a time when they have not been asked to supervise other students. We have almost 900 students being fed in one hour and a half. It is very helpful if you keep money in their account if they're eating lunch with us and you have a pay pouch where you can do that online or they can keep an account balance. But if they have to make change in the lunch line, you can imagine what that does to our rate of students going through the line when we're feeding 900. So it's very helpful to pay in advance. That will be great. When you go to your classrooms with your schedule, teachers will provide, if they do not have that tonight, they will Monday, a syllabus. It will be the learning objectives, the pacing guide, the grading and homework policy, and the expectations for conduct. Student conduct. Just so everyone is on the same page on that, uh, the discipline issues, we live in an awesome community. Now, there is our discipline issues. Not a lot. Not a lot. Tardies. 288 referrals last year. It's the big one. Being tardy to class or being tardy to school. Uh, cell phone. So everyone knows what the cell phone policy is. Some, uh, some students earlier had a cell phone out. They, they started hiding it when I walked up. Parents want their students to have a cell phone. That ship's kind of left the heart. Here's what we ask so we can have order at school. At 7.50, the cell phone is turned off, and it's not used again until school is dismissed, unless you have teacher permission. I think that's a reasonable policy. If there's an emergency or there's something they need to do, they can, get their, they can ask the teacher, da da da, may I use my cell phone? But other than that, the cell phone should be open. Uh, we are not going to be the cell phone Nazis. We're not going to try to find them. We're not going to search them. But if they're disrupting class, 
They will be sanctioned if they do not have a teacher's permission. And we'll talk about what happens on that. Uh, PDA, public displays of affection. And then dress code. I think we had 28 office referrals on dress code last year. So you need to look in your family handbook about what the dress code is. And I think it's pretty similar to what it was at the middle school. It's not going to be a lot different. Uh, let's talk. Someone is sent to us, we're going to be guilty of being gracious. You can make a mistake, but you can't let your mistake become a practice. Once we determine it is becoming a practice, the sanctions go up significantly. So the first time in general, now serious things happen, and we're not going to do a verbal warning if it's serious. But in general, if it was an honest mistake, da, 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 there will be a conference and a letter home that your child was warned for cell phone or for dress code or for whatever it was. Disrespect, not you know, good something. The second time that the same thing happens, it's going to be extra attention. The third time, Saturday school, and we're going to assume by the fourth time that it is no longer a mistake. But it has become a practice, and that will be in-school suspension. Uh, we are not going to beat anyone up. We're not going to behead anyone. We're not going to paddle anyone. Here's what we will do. If a student does not allow us to have an orderly school environment, we will remove them from the campus. And life will be And so you need to have that conversation. That's what's going to happen. If your child ends up in in-school suspension, it's because they're not letting us have class. And we are going to have class. So, uh, you know, just cover that. And as long as they're not making disruption of practice, they will be fine. And I'm sure that will be the case. The uh, quick review about like this. On all of these, you will get a letter mailed home. For some reason, students do not bring these letters home. I don't know what's it. And so we're going to buy that. How much does stamps cost now? 40, we're going to spend 50 cents. And we're going to send you a letter. And if your child gets to in-school suspension and you've not received the letter, you need to call them. Because as a parent, we want you to support what's going on. And you can't support it if you don't know about it. What I have found is that after the third, after three warnings, warning, actually the attention in Saturday school, if that fourth one happens, you know what most parents say? Boy, you deserve that. Hope you enjoy this school suspension. And that's, and, that's, and that's the way we want it to be. Uh, Y'all aren't going to believe this, but it is 6.56. I had 30 minutes scheduled. I started two minutes late, and I'm about to get through. This is my last slide. Uh, I was asked to talk about arrival and dismissal. And so, y'all, can y'all see my red dot? That thing's about gone, isn't it? This is our school campus. The biggest area to arrive and dismiss from is the back parking lot. The front parking lot will be closed in January, but it is supposed to be for our disabilities bus to arrive and depart from, and guests and visitors. So we would prefer that you did not use the front entrance. And it will be closed down in six months anyway. But you can also use this side entrance over here on the east side of the campus. Uh, 
I would suggest you just kind of try some different places and see which one works best for you. It's not like an elementary school where you line up and you got to do this or you got to show a number of card names. Like just kind of figure it out. Uh, a lot of our students are driving, so uh, after the first day or two, it kind of balances out. If your child drives, they will have to get a parking decal, and they'll have a sign parking. Now, the, the biggest thing that I think is important, and, and I, I, I'm going to take my two, I've got two more minutes, so I'm going to take those. The biggest thing that I think is important is for your student to know your expectations and aspirations for them. I want you to go to school. I want you to, you know, whatever you choose to be, then every day go be that person. Go be that career. I may not be good English, but you get what I'm saying. Go be somebody every day. It's hard work. Uh, if a child is caught on our campus with a controlled substance, it ruins our day. We take no joy in it. And it happens every year. Every year, someone, student, is caught on this campus with a controlled substance. And at the very least, at the very least, they're going to alternative school for one year. It ruins our day, but it ruins their year. And you can't change it. This campus, the community expects this campus to be substance free. And uh, if we catch someone, they're gone at least for a year. And I can tell you, this does not work. And it does happen. And, you know, my fear as a parent is that one day, uh, stupidity strikes my child. Want to read that? Very, very rare. Very, very rare. But it's devastating. No. And you need to have that conversation. I would encourage you to have that conversation with your child. No matter what your friends are doing. If it's something like that, yeah, I told my children, here's your defense. If something like that is going on, I want all the eyewitnesses to say you were sprinting away. That's the only thing I want to hear. Not that I was trying to convert them or I was trying to help them. You get away from them. Stay away. Run. No got that? No good with that? That's important. Okay. Now that's my that's enough lecture. It will be a great year if there's ever anything that Kim or Tim or I can do to help your year be better. Please let us know. If your children, your students see something going on campus that should not be, they need to tell us. We're here representing you. And we cannot represent you if we do not know. I will tell you this, occasionally there's some harassment, but on this campus, based on student reports, uh, it's less than three or four percent. Now for those three or four percent of the students, it's, that's not good, but it is a very, very rare problem. Our kids are good. I'm gonna say that again. Our kids are good. Occasionally we have something that makes mistakes. If someone's making it a practice to bother your child, call me. We will not let it be the practice. Might be a mistake, but it won't be the practice.